Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. So the question is, is the Acer L2, either 24 or 36, the best diode laser ever made? Hell yes. I think by a long shot. Now there's some exceptions and we're going to get into all of that. And there's some things about it that are just really not that great. Some of the things that they claim are so important, but overall, I have never seen a diode laser that is better than this one. I can definitely say that. I don't think there's anything even close. Now, again, there are some exceptions to who's using it and for what, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. And we know that the IKEA is pretty darn close. There's very few differences between the IKEA and the Acer right now. And the IKEA is Adam Stack. And uh, I told you already that the, the, the little lens, the, you know, the orange lens, instead of having that solid thing around it, that is a game changer for me. And uh, so I find it so, so important. It's better than having to take it off like I have to do with all other lasers, like I would with the IKEA. So, you know, hey, if the price differences and the IKEA is lower, would I go for that? Maybe, you know, so it's something to think about. And also, and I don't know if Acer is going to come out with this, there is a 48-watt, 24-switchable um, that is also on the way. And I don't know, I know very little about it. I did make a video on it when I first found out about it, but there's still not enough information for me to say that it's good or that, uh, you know, that switching technology is worth having. But I do find that being able to switch from 36 watts to 24 to 12 or whatever, I think will be in the future. I think it, you will be able to do it through Lightburn at some point. You know, the thing about lasers is they've changed so much just since the beginning of the year. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like uh, by the end of this year. It's just mind blowing how amazing this. I love lasers. I get up every day. This is what I want to do. This is what excites me. And so when anything new comes out, I want to talk about it. I mean, IKEA did send me the 36 watt, but I begged for it. They didn't just like, oh, hey, we'll give this to you. And they, no strings attached. They did not say to say a single word. They didn't say what not to say, nothing. And I, I love that. But I had been re recommending the eights are over every other brand for quite some time, with a few exceptions, which I am going to talk about, like I said. So let's just get into this. I know I've babbled long enough, but I think everything I said was pretty important when it comes to talking about the best diode laser. So what makes it the best? First of all, the speed. Now, so many diode lasers have come out and said they're so fast and they can do all this stuff. But the truth is, it's either not true and you try and take it up to a fast speed and everything is jiggly and the lines look terrible. And I've had this happen and I've not really been able to do fast engraves with any laser because they just don't look good. This one, they look great. I mean, the addition of the linear rail and not having any wheels, I think is really helpful because these laser modules, I'll show you a picture. They're not small. These things are huge. So you really need something solid to hold on to that thing if you're going to be moving it at 50,000 millimeters per minute. But I have done tests uh, with it at 50,000 millimeters per minute, and it looks great. And I couldn't tell any difference between running it at 2,000 millimeters a minute or 50,000 millimeters per minute. And the lines were still very crisp. That is unbelievable. And to me, already makes it the best diode laser ever made. But it wouldn't be useful if you didn't have enough power. And I'm thinking when it comes to if you really want to use the speed, you have to have the 36 watt or probably the 48 when it comes out. Downside is the bigger your module is getting, the smaller your working area is getting. I mean, this one is uh, 410 and we're going to get into that later. But that's still bigger than most lasers are, but it's smaller than the, their old one, the P20. So we're going to get into that. 
But the speed is phenomenal. And the fact that it's usable speed is even better. I'm doing, I'm practicing, you know, I'm doing every test you can imagine. I tested leather today. I tested, you know, wood, uh, different types of engraves. I, you know, I really could use a, an image that I can just put right into Lightburn and have a really good test. So if you guys have one, link me up or something so that I can show you guys what this 36 watt can do when it comes to engraving. But you, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to do every test under the sun. So like, subscribe if you care about any of this and we'll get on to it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about what they call the Z-axis step syncing, to where in Lightburn, you can make the Z-axis go up or down. So you can actually make the module do a cut, then go down a little bit and do another cut. But you could also probably do it with engraving, right? And I haven't tried this yet, but I mentioned in the last video that a lot of times people want to use defocusing when they're doing the, to do the best engraving. I learned this from Rich, Louisiana Hobby Guy, which I'm going to mention several times in this video. Um, so if you want to learn more about engraving, go over to him. And uh, we're going to talk about the best engraving machine later. Some of you could probably already guess what I'm going to say there. But when it comes to the syncing and you being able to run a test with defocusing right from your chair, you could run it uh, one and then move it and have it run, you know, all different heights to where you could see and get the best thing possible. You could also do with cutting, you can do a ramp test right from your seat. You can have it just go across and move up or down as much as you want all along your axis. And that's better than, you know, putting some board up there and trying to make sure it doesn't move and having to go through all that. Come on, Rich, that's pretty amazing, right? You could just start from one side and do your ramp test flat, just the way it should be. So I think that is another game changer. And uh, you know, this is what they claim to use it for is being able to cut deeper, which it can. But honestly, I'm not getting a, a diode laser so that I can cut two by fours. So that function, yeah, maybe I'll use it once in a while, but really it's these other ways that people aren't thinking about that being able to use the Z-axis in a step motor, there's probably ones I'm not thinking about that are really going to open up new possibilities. I mentioned the linear rails and no wheels and how everything's very solid. That's very important. The auto air assist. Listen, you got, many of you have lasers out there. Now tell me, when it's not cutting, is it still on? Is the air still on? Does, doesn't it drive you crazy? Don't you just want to turn it off? I think the only one that had this early on was the Ortur Laser Master 3, which would at least turn the module off when it wasn't working and when it cooled down. But it still left the air assist on. With this, once you're done cutting, everything shuts off. There's no air. There's no module. It's just peace. And oh my gosh, it's heaven. So... That is a huge reason to have this machine. Something that's sort of cool so far, uh, you know, I haven't completely embraced it, is the autofocus. I have uh, turned it on, I've turned it off, because with a lot of things, I just don't want to use it. So sometimes, you know, when I'm, I'm doing it, it's fine. But I tend to be working on the same type of material for a while. So it's really not that helpful if I just, you know, do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> and I guess the same thing is true with the crosshairs. I'm not, I don't find that I'm using them that often, but, uh, you know, it's a nice feature. I, I would rather it, you know, be right where the laser is, but you know, it's, it's, that's one of those okay things. Now what is complete BS? Um, the resume after, uh, where if you lose power, it will resume. Listen, that only works in offline mode when you're using it right from the terminal on the laser. Now, that is great that you could do it that way. It, it, um, but how many of you are going to be running from light burn? How many are you going to be running off that terminal? Now, for me, because I do a lot of production, I will end up using that quite a bit 
just because uh, I'll be running the same thing over and over. So if the power does trip it and me being able to go back, especially because I'll be making a lot of something, that may be a huge saver. And if that ever saves my ass, I will definitely get on here and tell you about it. But just realize that they don't mention the fact that you can't use it with Lightburn. So I, to me, that's kind of BS. Um, that's the only thing that I really find is just like, eh, you know, uh, I think it's a great feature, but just don't say like, oh, I've got this and nobody else does. And, you know, not mention the fact that it's kind of limited, but, you know, I feel like I got to tell, tell it how it is. Uh, you know, even though I absolutely love this machine, there are still some opportunities here. Uh, the Kerf isn't the smallest one I've ever had. The um, Actually, the longer Ray 20, one of the cheapest uh, machines. I believe it's on a great sale right now. I'll put that in the description. That is an actual affiliate leak, but I, I do really, really, really love the longer Ray 20. It had the smallest Kerf of any 20-watt laser I've ever seen, and i like somebody else to confirm that as well. If you're making puzzle-type things, nothing better. But hey, over 6,000 millimeters per minute, it ain't that great. But for the price, hell of a laser. Um, the best engraving laser on the market. I've kind of got to give it to the Rolly, right? Uh, from everything that I know and trust, this thing, it's only a 10 watt laser. But if you're mostly just doing engraving and speed is not your biggest thing, then, wow, I, you know, I, I am in love with this machine. Uh, it's just got everything. It's got the camera. It's got the case. It's got the honeycomb bed. It's got the linear rails. It's, it's just beautiful. And it's $900 right now. And I think if you really, really want to do engraving and you know that's going to be your main thing, you know, maybe you want to have one of these and something else if you want to cut. But I, I think if you... Uh, you know, fine detail is your thing. Uh, this is definitely the way to go. I personally don't do a lot of engraving. I do engraving, but not fine engraving, right? I engrave coasters and, you know, things like that, not pictures and paintings. So this is actually way better for me to be able to go super fast. Another downside of the L2 is it's very unproven. I mean, hey, mine's working great. I haven't had any trouble with it. But if I want to fix something, I'm going to have to go to the Facebook group or something because there's a lot of things that just there's no videos on yet. I mean, I wanted to do a video for you guys on how to clean the lens. I start taking it apart here and I'll pop up a picture. I took the screws out like you normally would and the thing doesn't come out. Now, it looks really hard to get dust on that lens the way this is made, but I want to know for sure. I want to do a test. Hey, if I'm not using Air Assist, is that lens going to get dirty? I start pulling it off. It doesn't come off. I, I think it's the air hose holding it on. But I can't figure out how I would put the air hose back on and then get it in. I can't figure this out. And I didn't want to pull too hard and mess something up. So until I know officially how to do this, I'm not going to mess with it. So if anybody else out there knows how to get to the lens on these L2s or the IKEA. I looked it up on uh, online. You know, I went through the videos. There is nothing on it here. I went through the Acer. There's nothing on it here. And that's one little tip. If you guys get the uh, Acer, you want to look at the IKEA videos to help you fix a lot of these problems as well. Maybe you go to the IKEA Facebook. I would definitely be part of both of those. I'm part of the Facebook group for the uh, L2s. But um, frankly, as, as much as I like it and everything, they review all the posts. It's reviewed from somebody in China. So you want to post something, it may come out the next day. It may come out three days later, four days later. I don't think that's a way to run a Facebook group, to be honest. And uh, I'd like to see an independent one so that we can actually learn from each other on, on the fly, on a daily basis, and get this thing done. Now, would I choose this over a P20. And that I think that's another thing where we get into it. I, I was talking about uh, other ways that some lasers are better. I talked about the Rolly for engraving. Well, the P20 is a hell of a deal. I mean, I think it's what, it's $850 right now. 
And I believe it's $1,100 for the 24 watt. Now, I just mentioned all of the great reasons why you would want to have the better laser. But if you don't want to spend $1,100 on a laser and you want something proven to work, proven to be a workhorse, uh, you know, going with the B20 might actually be, oh, it's actually $840. Well, it's only $10 for the air assist. I think you just <laughs> get that no matter what, even if you're going to give it away to somebody. But the P20s, it's a great machine. If you've watched the Clack Shack, you know, it's a little bit bigger area and you can get a bigger extension and it is a workhorse and it's a great machine and $850, come on. There's probably a great deal here where you can get the extension and whatever. So, you know, that I think that's that's probably a great deal for a lot of people. So don't overlook that. I think just because newer doesn't necessarily mean that much better. I mean, you can listen to what I said in this video and pit it against the P20 and say, okay, is it worth that extra for me for what I want to do? Because I've said before, I really think that 20 watts is the sweet spot for lasers. It's so nice. I mean, your engraving is still pretty nice. It can do cutting through most things. And uh, it just all around, I think, is the best. But you can, like for me, doing production, 36 watt is the way to go because I can do a lot more, a lot faster, and it still looks great. So I, Rich is doing uh, the battle of the 20-watt lasers, so I'm very interested. He will eventually get to all of them, and I'll be very interested to see which one comes out on top. I got to imagine the Acer P20 is going to be right there. Now, I have a ton more to learn about the L2s, but I can honestly say right now they are the best laser on the market. And I don't think there's anything even close other than the IKEA, which is almost identical. So whichever one is on sale and cheaper, I think it's the Acer actually right now, would be the way to go. And I, and again, I think if it's a $50 difference, I'm taking the one that doesn't have that stupid cover, uh, which is the Acer. Uh, there will be so much more videos to come on the Acer. I'm actually moving, so probably be another week, but... Um, I've done so much testing that I haven't actually been able to post yet. I know I have a lot of leather workers on my channel. I see that you watch those videos and I, it's just one of those things where like when it comes to leather, I want to just do leather. I don't want to be switching between wood and all different things. I want to just do leather and I want to just make leather stuff. And so that will be coming after I move. I bought tons of amazing leather. I'll be making such good things. And I will be giving you more recommendations for how to do that, especially on this 36 watt machine. So thanks again for being here. Uh, I hope you love lasers as much as I do, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, love y'all.